Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest channel and podcast. If you have not subscribed yet, please do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're already here, go ahead and hit the like button if you are listening to slash watching this on YouTube. I really do appreciate it. And let's get into this podversation. Well, recently, a sermon by Bishop T.D. Jakes has gone viral. It was a Father's Day sermon. And so... I'm assuming it was, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know when this happened because um, I don't have the date on it. I mean, there's a Father's Day every year. So I'm not sure if it was something that he taught or preached. I don't even want to say taught, but preached last year. But it's it's said that it's a Father's Day sermon and He's been talking to the parishioners and I know that he does not just have women in his congregation, but in the majority of churches, the vast majority of the congregants and members are women. So I'm going to play a snippet of his sermon. I actually got this from the Sandra Rose blog, so I'm going to shout out her blog. It's one of the blogs that I have gone back and forth to since my days of being a legal assistant many, many moons ago. I would have not been a legal assistant since 2007, so it's been a long time. But I digress. I want to get into this conversation, and so let's go ahead and play a little snippet of what he has been saying. Pour in. When Adam is created and Eve is pulled out of him, he breaks the divine order because men were designed to pour in when he started receiving from her. If Adam had not allowed Eve to pour into him, Sin would have never come into the world. Sin came into the world because Adam broke the order. We were not designed to receive from women. Your self-esteem is compromised when you have to ask your wife for lunch money. I'm not saying you got to be rich. I'm not saying you got to be uh, famous. I'm saying that you have got to be the one who pours in, not the one who takes out. When Adam started eating out of his wife's hand, sin came in because the divine order was broken. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And Adam all of a sudden has allowed the curse to come because he stopped pouring. Women, be careful about pouring too much into us. We are designed to pour into you. And you are designed to take what we pour into you and increase it and make it better. You increase it, you appreciate it, and you multiply it. This breaks all sociological order that the culture we're living in now. Because we are raising up women to be men. You are applauded in the contemporary society by how tough, rough, nasty, mean, aggressive, hateful, possessive you are, and you are climbing the corporate ladder, but we are losing our families. I know you can buy your own car. I know you can buy your own house, but until you create a need that I can pour into, I have no place in your life. So stop coming home bragging to me about how much you don't need me and wonder why I 
bounce our way. Okay. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm going to pause it right there. I may play a little bit more of this. But I don't want this conversation to be extremely long, just like I say on almost every conversation. But some things that he said are true. No, no doubt about it. I don't believe that women were made to pour into men when if you believe the Bible or not, I, I, I believe that a lot of principles that are in the Bible and a lot of things that are said that are in the Bible are real and true and guidelines for living. And a lot of things that are said in the Bible, it's not being adhered to today. So I do believe that a lot of disorder comes into play when people are not living by the order. And there are a lot of men who have not taken their rightful place, have not been extremely responsible, have made children here, there, and everywhere all across the land where they have had access to sleep with multiple women and create all of these children. They have not made children in a marriage. They created children outside of marriage. So there is no commitment. And, and that's just one example. I'm not saying that's every man because, um, you know, I'm blessed. I have, and I'm not saying I'm blessed because of my, my life of being married and, and all of those things, because I am not without struggle. Um, the Bible even says that in this life, you will have trials and tests. So I am definitely not saying that because I am a married woman that I'm blessed. I don't, I'm not saying that, but I'm, I'm saying that I understand that some of the things that he's saying can be, you know, can be true, but even though he has men, some men in his congregation that he is preaching to, this is something that he needs to be teaching to these men that are out here where you have so many different platforms, podcasts, YouTube channels, um, a, a, a big belief that's out there where there are just men that are out here bashing women and more specifically African-American women. And it's primarily African-American men that are bashing African-American women. We've seen one pass away um, a couple of months ago by the name of Kevin Samuels. I, I didn't listen to his platform, so things that I did hear were snippets, yeah, because I didn't subscribe to his channel and I didn't watch his content and my husband didn't either. And honestly, there are a lot of men who didn't, but there were a lot of men who agreed with him and there are some women that agree with him too. Just because he may have said some things that were that were real and some things that were true doesn't mean that he was doing things in the right order. And I'm going to do a separate conversation to discuss that. But what I'm going to speak to with regards to Bishop T.D. Jakes and this sermon that he was teaching about, we are raising our women to be men. Who is he talking to? Who, who is he addressing when he says we are raising our women to be men because we're strong and if we have the opportunity to succeed in life, we are being chastised for it. Let me tell you something. A lot of the women who have have this strength, most of them would prefer if they don't have this, they would prefer to be what the Bible calls for, a helpmeet. The Bible does call for women to be a help meet to the man, not to be the head of the household. The Bible also says that a man that doesn't take care of his home is worse than an infidel. And the the translation for infidel is an unbeliever. And so when the Bible says that a man that doesn't take care of his home is worse than an infidel, and these men may be out here creating lives but not raising them, and some women are in a deficit because they do not have the husband or the father in the household. They, they're doing the best that they can 
with what they have. And so if they get to a space where they're able to succeed and thrive in life, then I do believe that they should be applauded for it, but I don't believe that they should, I don't believe they should be chastised for it. Maybe the men who were not around, who were not there to support, maybe the woman could have gone further and farther in life if they had that support system, but they didn't. So for him to say that we are raising our women to be men, no, I mean, I believe that should be flipped around and it should be preach to men not saying that we're raising our women to be men but men we are not doing what we are supposed to be doing as a whole and by by proxy women are having to step into the role of being the woman and the man and so for a lot of women they may not be able to have the luxury of walking in their femininity whatever he was supposed to be meaning by that I don't really know um, exactly I have an idea but I'm not sure if he's speaking exactly what I believe he is but most women who are the head of the household they don't have the luxury of living in a space of showcasing their femininity because they're working, they're taking care of the house and home, they're taking care of the children. So they don't really have a whole, they don't have the, they don't have the opportunity to bask in their femininity because they've been made to be the head of the household. So I believe what he should have been preaching is that men, we can't continue to create lives and outside of the the design of uh, you know of a marriage or a a family because i believe in marriage but some people don't but just because you don't believe in marriage shouldn't mean that you should be out here sowing your seeds every everywhere like Nick Cannon is and think that that's okay because it because it's not so this sermon it should have been taught in a different way it should have been preached in a different way and it should be him not preaching to a predominantly uh i, I was about to say uh, a room, but this is low key a stadium. So a stadium predominantly filled with women and it should be preached to men. Like the Bible says to be out on the street corners and out in the, the fields and out in the harvest. He needs to be out there not having the, the luxury of being in his huge mega church in his three piece suit preaching to the majority of the women and I I wouldn't say bashing them, but making them feel bad when they're pretty much the reason why he is who he is. Let's just be clear. I'm not saying that he doesn't have men who are a part of his congregation and men who give offerings and, and all of those things and supports his ministry, but it is predominantly women that are the ones who are giving of almost everything, sometimes to their detriment. Some women will give their last to the church. And I do believe a lot of women have done that. So when he says we were not designed to receive from women, your self-esteem is compromised when you have to ask your wife for lunch money. I know you can buy your own car. I know you can buy your own house. But until you create a need that I can pour into, I have no place in your life. So stop coming home bragging to me about how much you don't need me and wonder why I shy away. I don't believe any woman in their right mind would ever do that unless... Let's let's be clear. And I wouldn't even say they're bragging about it, but they are letting a loser know who may try to come at them in a certain type of way. And this woman is working hard and has built everything that they have by the hard work, blood, sweat, and tears that they put into their career to have a man tell them something that is extremely, I don't know, degrading, or a, you know, a put down. Sometimes some men project their insecurities onto a woman because they may be feeling some certain type of way. It's not so much that the woman made them feel that they don't need them. So if 
a threat <laughs> may come out of the mouth of a man in some way or or let's just use this as an example Melody Cherie and Martel Holt from Love and Marriage Huntsville in recent weeks a clip or some clips and even the entire panel of this panel that he was on where he was speaking about his marriage and he he made some claims some things that I don't 100% agree with or believe but he made it well known that when he was on the uh, show Love and Marriage Huntsville, he cheated on his wife and he was cheating over and over again for a long time with the same person. He probably was with other people. I don't believe that he was faithful to the, the side piece either. But what I will say is this, in a situation where you have a man who was married to a woman, but you're both working, you're both working really hard. And I believe Melody worked really hard. Okay. And there may have been times where, you know, we women, we have the children, we take care of the children. He tries to make it as appear as if she just birthed the children, but he was the primary caretaker and the breadwinner. And she was just some loser chick who was just sitting around playing on the internet, hoping that one day she would get on TV far from the case. She was definitely a hard worker, but he would try to throw things in her face about not sexually satisfying him. And see, the problem I have with that is this. It's not for a lack of the sex even happening because she's made that clear as well. But some men, especially a narcissist like Martel, they want it when they want it, how they want it. And he even talked about oral and stuff like that. It's who knows how she was feeling at the moment where he would come and throw his schlong in her face and say, okay, I need you to take care of that. She may not have felt good. He may have smelled funny. Let's just be honest. So when you do things like that and then you're getting on this woman's nerves because we work hard, we do a lot, we put up with a lot, but there are times when we just snap, not snap in a violent way, but just snap in a way where we may say some things in response to, because most women respond to men. It's not saying that some women are not aggressive where they're just like over the top, outwardly aggressive and whatever, but most women respond to men. That's usually in our nature. So how you treat us is how we will respond. So you come at a woman in a way where it's not tactful. You're not making them feel loved. It's just sort of like turn over and let's do this. There's no romance to it, yada, yada. You just want to get your rocks off. And then if a comment is made about, well, you know, I take care of everything around here or whatever. And then the woman in response says, are you forgetting everything that I have been doing. I work hard around here too. I contribute to this household. I pay these bills. I've taken care of this. I've bought this. It's usually in response to. So it's not that this woman is saying that she's just going down the list bragging about all of the things that she has done. So I don't need you. It's bull crap. So for him to say that, for him to preach that in that sermon about, you know, women and saying, so stop coming home bragging to me about how much you don't need me and wonder why I shy away. That's bull. You are giving men who already don't need an excuse because they've taken the L and they've taken the easy way out anyway. You're giving them even more of a reason to say, See, this is what I'm talking about. Bishop T.D. Jakes affirmed it. He said it. You women don't know how to treat men and that's why we don't stay around. No, you are supposed to stick around. If you have the balls to create children, literally, <laughs> okay? If you have the balls to create children, then you need to be able to take care of them and not taking care of your your physical needs and just getting satisfied in that way for the few minutes it takes to do that and then you have kids all over the place no if you're going to create life then you should be able to stick it out marry that woman and quit having other kids all over the place make it work why not all these other cultures they they do the the arranged marriage thing and sometimes it may not work out but a lot of times it does when I've seen those different shows like 90 Day Fiance and say there's someone in India and the 
the son met someone online that's in the United States and the parents of that Indian child, they were, they had been married for, I don't know, 40 some odd years and their marriage was arranged. Arranged. They make it work. Am I saying that I'm for arranged marriage? I'm not against it. I believe that in the right space and time, it could work for some people. And me, we see that on the Married at First Sight show a lot. And it is intriguing just to know about it. But I can say for myself, being a businesswoman, being an entrepreneur for all of the years that I have been, and also being married even longer than I have been an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur since 2006, and I've been married since 1998. So I've been a wife and in a marriage with my best friend, I would say that, longer than I have been an entrepreneur. But I love doing what I do. I'm blessed to say that I am in a career field doing what I enjoy doing. It really is something that I'm extremely grateful for. But I'm also, I would say, even more blessed to say that I'm married to someone that loves me, I love him, and we, you know, we're friends. Is it without setbacks and struggles or disagreements? Absolutely not, because that's not real life. When you're married to, if you're not married to yourself, (laughs) you're going to have disagreements. You're going to have arguments. You're not going to agree about everything. It's just the way that it is, but you make it work. But I don't put him down and he doesn't put me down, but I definitely love for my man and my husband to pick up the lead in areas, but there are some areas where I may lead. It is 100%, 100%, not 50-50, you do your part and I do mine. It doesn't work that way. And if we had known that even in earlier years, things may have been like bliss for more, more times than they weren't if we weren't listening to other people and, and other, just, just other thoughts and, and mindsets where marriage is involved. And so with someone like Bishop T.D. Jakes saying something like that and putting this out there about, you know, saying women are being raised up to be men and you're not applauded for your femininity, you're applauded in the contemporary society by how tough, rough, nasty, mean, aggressive, hateful, possessive you are, and you're climbing the corporate ladder, but we are losing our families. That has to be placed at the feet of men because in the Bible, it calls for men to be the leaders where all of these things that he's speaking about is involved. The women that he is primarily talking about have not had any other choice but to be tough, but to be sometimes aggressive if they have been hurt, to be somewhat maybe hateful, if they have had things stolen from them, to be possessive. And, and, you know, if they have been harmed in some way, to be rough, to respond to some people in a nasty way. If they're tired, they're worn out, they haven't had the support that they need, that they deserve, and climbing the corporate ladder, like, are are you kidding me right now? It's about men, not about the women, because rarely will you see a man have all of the children that they created from all of these different women as their children that they're raising and they have sole custody of. But a woman could have, I don't know, I've seen it before. Thank, thankfully, that has not been my plight. I've only had one child in my lifetime and my husband is my child's father. But I've seen it, you know, children, seven, eight kids, and almost all of them have different dads. And that woman, even though, you know, we would give the woman the side eye, like, oh my God, she has all of those kids. But think about it. She has no choice but to take care of all of these kids because where is the father? And I'm not saying that none of the children's fathers pay child support or anything like that, but that isn't, that isn't everything. So he preaching a, a word like this is, is pretty much crazy. And I, I know that it hasn't been received really well, but I really believe that a lot of the things that I am, 
I am hearing now after learning a lot of things about his daughter, Cora Jakes, and I'm going to talk about that in a different conversation because I've been building up, building up, building up, and I just have not taken the opportunity and time to really speak on that in depth. So I would probably be doing several conversations about that situation because it is, it's just crazy. But I really believe that his message was misdirected it, it shouldn't have been preached to women. This is something that he needs to be preaching to men. And a lot of the things that he said in this sermon needs to be turned around because it is not about women wanting to climb the corporate ladder and wanting to be the heads of the household and saying, I don't need a man. Most women who say that, they say it out of hurt. They say it out of rejection. They say it because they don't want to be seen as desperate and they're not in a relationship with a man. So people blame them for not being in a relationship for a man. See, it's her fault. It's your fault. That's why you can't get a man. And so in response, that one woman say, well, I don't need a man because I'm, I'm living okay. I don't need, you know, sex is not a need for me. We are not all hot and bothered and need to get taken care of in that way. A lot of people live celibate lifestyles. So it's not so much about that. And then if you're into that stuff, they make they make tools and toys these days. So if women really just want to handle that for the moment, then they can do it without having to deal with a man and being safe and not exposing themselves to STDs or the possibility of getting pregnant again. So I say all of these things to say that as a woman myself and as a woman in business, but also someone who is married and who has been married for a long time, Bishop T.D. Jake should know better. Know better. I believe that he needs to come off of the high horse, out of the stadium, the, the mega church space that he has created, and get your pompous, you know what, onto these podcasts where it's predominantly men of this, what they call now a manosphere or this red pill community, they call it where it just seems like all they do is sit and talk about women and why women don't have husbands or why they don't date African-American women or why African-American women have all of these babies' daddies and they need to be more selective of who they have children with and all of these other things and not taking the accountability for themselves. Because you see, when Bishop T.D. Jakes talked about Adam allowing Eve to feed him of the of the forbidden tree that God told them not to touch in his sermon he blamed Eve he said Eve brought sin into the world by feeding Adam but here's the kicker here's what he did not say God spoke to Adam and Adam spoke to Eve Because Adam was the head. God made Adam the head. And God supposedly took Eve out of Adam. So if God told Adam, uh, in this garden, you can eat of every tree, but of this tree thou shalt not eat. When Eve brought the fruit to Adam, he should have said, you may have already eaten of that, but I'm not going to touch it because God said not to, right? But he took it. So how is it Eve's fault that Adam did something that God told him not to do? (laughs) Okay. So again, in his sermon, blaming woman by saying that Eve brought sin into the world by feeding Adam. Adam should have just said no. So again, the words that he's preaching needs to be flipped and the script needs to be rewritten and it needs to be preached to the men. I don't know. I I mean, I could go even deeper with this because there's there's other components to it. But I I just don't want to get too too heavily involved in this message. It already went about 15 minutes longer than I anticipated that it will. But I would really love to know what you guys think about this. So let me know your thoughts about this in the comment section. Guys, I really appreciate it. It you just being here. Thank you for liking, commenting, 
and subscribing to the YouTube channel and to the podcast. And I am Beth. And until next time, I'm just being beautifully honest.